somewhere around 70 it is almost somewhere around 60 67 68 now and uh, life expectancy somewhere at uh, life expectancy at somewhere around 45 to 50 years of age in india is now some, somewhere around 74 75 and in western countries it is almost touching 82 83 years of age so uh, we as humans um, are actually having a very long life these days so what could be the contributing major contributing factor for this one of the major contribute some major contributing factors for this increased lifespan anybody of you can tell the healthcare i didn't get you healthcare Medical science healthcare of course in healthcare and also availability of food good nutrition so hunger has reduced uh, in a big way and uh, uh, let us say uh, we have been able to provide for almost uh, almost that is uh, all the mouths that are there if not in the world at least majorly in our country you don't hear any famine or people going to bed without any food that is it can be there but then that could be that could be an exception or very rare and another reason is that we have been able to have a good control on most of the diseases that were there uh, especially uh, the uh, neonatal diseases as well as uh, what is it called diseases that were there affecting the young age so and one of the reasons for because all these were infectious diseases and most of these diseases were caused by bacteria and uh, we had these uh, antibacterials that were identified over a period of let us say 1920s 1930s and uh, this was one of the main reasons uh, why uh, we had what is it called uh, uh, increased lifespan this was probably one of the main reasons why we had an increased lifespan now when we talk about antibiotics all of you know about antibiotics all of you are chemistry people i suppose so what do you mean by antibiotics what is what do you understand by antibiotics can you tell me any of you sir um, small amount of uh, microbes which are given so that uh, so small amount of microbes yeah small amount of uh, sir uh, the med the drugs which are produced yeah. by the it's the drugs that the, fight against bacteria basically drugs that yeah. fight against bacteria okay so you have a uh, how many of you have taken antibiotics in the last two to three years so all of us yes all of us. Yes. So it is pretty common and all of us have small children in our house or we will be expecting small children in our house and uh, small children are also exposed to antibiotics especially during the first three to four years of age uh, they are exposed to a lot of antibiotics and the problem is that uh, this antibiotic use and over a period of time how many of us take antibiotics without prescription without going to the doctor hmm? sir i think most of us you think most of us Yes. And there is a very good uh, practice of going and taking. No, sir, not at all. We know sometimes, uh, but uh, still, I think. But still, many of us do, if not all of us. Many of us, or uh, some of us, definitely, many of us often. Okay. So we do that. And uh, this is actually a problem that actually creates, and we start abusing this antibiotic. We start abusing this antibiotic. And we are starting abusing a particular product that has actually helped us live such a long, long life, which just about two generations back, when our uh, grandfather had the maximum somewhere around 40 to 50 years of age, at when lifespan at the, what is it called, uh, at uh, puberty, uh, we are living somewhere around 67 to 70, 75 years of age. So that is a major, major increase. But abusing this particular product is going to be extremely detrimental to us. And we'll be talking about this antibiotic as well as antibiotic resistance that is happening and why this is happening. Okay. 
so uh, we will be just uh, going into so even the word antibody uh, can you pause for a minute i'm just asking the recording okay so even though we use the term antibiotics which actually means uh, uh, what is it called killing or products that are going to be affecting all life it actually means antibacterials okay so most of the bac uh, pathogenic bacteria and uh, most of the pathogenic diseases especially infectious diseases uh, have been caused by bacteria and even now they are the most one of the major source of diseases like tuberculosis uh, like e coli like uh, what is it called shigella campylobacter there are so many uh, staphylococcus there are so many of them that are the major causes of human infections and uh, these antibiotics actually are products that are going to be either killing the bacteria or they are going to be inhibiting the bacteria inhibiting the growth of the bacteria so they are, they can be bacteriostatic or bacterial killing okay and antibiotics are also used mainly in human medicine but uh, many of us have pets in our house at least one of us would be having pets in our house so we will be having a lot of uh, diseases of companion animals as well as farm animals so in veterinary medicine also it is being used and this is one of the major what is it called uh, targets of these antibiotics okay so when you have or when you think about antibiotics uh, you remember whom do you remember about tumhara class mein jab padhate ho whom do you say that who they were he, this person is the one who actually discovered antibiotics student uh, faculties louis pasteur sir louis so that's why actually no for okay. penicillin i thought penicillin was discovered correct penicillin was discovered by alexander fleming okay so that was what we think of but then much before alexander fleming you have heard of this person called paul ehrlich and he was working with a lot of uh, what is it called dyes so chemical dyes were the first compounds that were screened for uh, what is it called antibacterial effect and he found out an arsenic dye uh, arsfenamine which was uh, uh, what is it called commonly called as salvarsan this was taken by this company called hest h o e c h c h s t so this was the company that marketed this particular product and he won the nobel prize in 1908 for this particular invention and later on there was another product that was introduced before what is it called a penicillin so that was a sulfa drug all of you i don't know whether you remember having taken sulfa as an antibiotic so sulfa is also a very common was a very commonly used antibiotic probably during our young age we would have taken and this was um, uh, discovered by domac so domac won the nobel prize in 1939 for discovering this sulfonamide class of antibacterials and uh, this was uh, famous by this name prontosil okay and the uh, story of uh, what is it called uh, alexander fleming discovering penicillin and the penicillin class of antibiotics it was actually this person called ernest dushens he was trying to be uh, during his phd thesis he was a french what is it called um uh, doctor and he was trying to find out uh, how, rather for his phd he was discovering or he was studying the various uh, green molds that were there and he was finding that this mold penicillium glaucum this is actually a fungi so this mold is was able to compete with e coli as well as staphylococcus at the time it was called as bacillus typhi but now it is known as uh, st uh, staphylococcus uh, and uh, streptococcus so uh, staphylococcus uh, what is it called uh, salmonella sorry not staphylococcus salmonella typhi so this uh, he found that this particular fungi when it was grown along with this particular bacteria these bacteria were not able to grow properly and then he also tested when because this both uh, uh, staphylococcus i mean 
uh, salmonella as well as e coli causes a lot of infection in humans so he injected this e coli and salmonella in mice and along with that he also injected this penicillin glaucum and he found out that the injection of penicillin glaucum helped in reduction of the appearance of this disease and the mice were able to be quite healthy okay and then in what is it called uh, 19 uh, 24 25 26 it was alexander fleming who again let us say rediscovered this that penicillin uh, when it was grown along with other bacteria uh, it was able to reduce the growth of the other bacteria and by himself he was not able to crystallize and purify that particular principle but along with his other colleagues like ernst chain howard florey etc he was able to crystallize this particular pro, uh, principle that was actually the antibiotic and both chain and florey shared the nobel prize with fleming in 1945 so this is the let us say the history of antibiotics and since then a lot of antibiotics have been identified so when you see this antibiotic repertoire that is going to be available they all belong to different classes of antibiotics they all belong to different classes of antibiotics and uh, they are what is it called bactericidal agents and some of them are bacteriostatic agents so those that are going to be in dark blue are going to be bactericidal and those that are going to be in light green are going to be bacteriostatic so i'll just give a, what is it called a fast uh, walk through as to what are the different kinds of these antibiotics that we deal with so one of the first antibiotics that i said that was sulfa so this is known as also you have examples of trimethoprim prontosil uh, what is it called sulfadiazine so many of them are there so this actually goes and affects the development of what is it called folic acid so during uh, when we were all pregnant we will be giving a lot of uh, what is it called folic acid supplements are going to be given because at that time the amount of dna that is going to be required is going to be very high so the production of dna is going to be inhibited so this inhibits the dna synthesis wherein it is going to be a competitive inhibitor of many of the enzymes that are involved in dna synthesis okay so this is going to be one of the oldest what is it called class of antibiotics that was used and this goes and inhibits the uh, dna synthesis the next group is the one that is going to be with the penicillin which actually goes and binds to cell wall and it inhibits the cell wall synthesis so bacteria have a cell wall and we have this uh, what is it called beta lactam ring that is going to be very critical in all these what is it called um, antibiotic of belonging to this class of um, penicillins so you have this beta lactam rings that actually goes and interferes with the cell wall biosynthesis so peptidoglycans are going to be there as well as uh, lipopolysaccharides are also going to be there so this are uh, the penicillin actually is going to be going and binding to the penicillin binding proteins so even though it is it is being called as penicillin binding proteins the main function of these penicillin binding proteins is to go and build, bind with the cellular i mean cell wall precursors it is going to be going and binding to the cell wall precursors and this penicillin when it is going to be present is going to be what is it called binding to this penicillin binding proteins so that it is not going to be functioning in the development of the cell wall so when the cell wall is not going to be there so this bacteria is are going to be not protected and they are going to be dying so even otherwise besides the uh, what is it called cell walls are not going to be uh, produced pro properly it also It, because of that the enzymes these enzymes also go, are going to be breaking down this what is it called cell wall okay the third the another group of antibiotics is the one that is going to be going and binding to what is it called uh, the protein synthesis inhibitors i will give you a what is it called uh, picture here so that it can be easily understood uh, are you the better place to keep this okay so uh, you have this here 
and you have the various classes of antibiotics that are going to be there so um, you sorry so you have this dna gyrase that is going to be inhibiting the replication of dna uh, during replication you have you have products that are going to be affecting the protein synthesis you have products that are going to be affecting the cell membrane okay and you are going to be having products that are going to be inhibiting the cell wall so you have various products that are going to be there you have the cell wall you have the cell membrane you have the what is it called uh, dna precursor synthesis that is going to be inhibited dna replication is going to be inhibited dna to rna transcription is going to be inhibited and the protein synthesis is going to be inhibited so you have various ways by which this particular Uh, these antibiotics are going to be affecting uh, the what is it called process so so when i go back to that slide where i was okay so you have another class of antibiotics that are now going to be classified as protein synthesis inhibitors you have got quite a good number of antibiotics that are going to be there which are going to be falling in this particular class you have got aminoglycosides you have got tetracycline you have got chloramphenicol you have got lino uh, linozoids so you have got a good number of these antibiotics so i am not going into the details of these antibiotics uh, i mean uh, what is it called uh, protein synthesis pathway they are going to be affecting protein synthesis at various steps of the protein synthesis pathway so you have got this amino glycosides ex example streptomycin neomycin kanamycin they are all going to be affecting the 30s ribosome binding sites tetracycline are also going to be going and affecting the 30s ribosome and you have chloramphenicol that also is going to be binding to the 30s ribosome linozoid also affects the different position in the 30s ribosome so you have many of them which are going to be affecting the protein synthesis by binding to the 30s ribosomes and you have streptogramins which are also a new class of antibiotics that have been there and they also inhibit what is it called uh, uh, the uh, protein synthesis of the bacteria and it is actually given as a combination of two antibiotics streptogramin a and streptogramin b so by themselves streptogramin a alone is only going to be growth inhibiting so or bacteriostatic uh, whereas if it is going to be uh, what is it called uh, given along with streptogramin a along with streptogramin b as a what is it called uh, together this is going to be showing more of a what is it called it is going to be able to kill the bacterial cells so in always bacterial um, uh, i was forgetting that particular term that i was there used so bactericidal sorry so they are they are going to be bactericidal than bacteriostatic okay then you have another area where another group of uh, what is it called uh, antibiotics that are again going to be affecting the uh, what is it called protein synthesis especially the 50s ribosome and uh, this is going to be the macrolides erythromycin then you have the sinericid again that is going to be a new antibiotic class that we had discussed so like the uh, beta lactam antibiotics that are going to be affecting the cell wall biosynthesis you have got other glycopeptides like vancomycin etc uh, tacoplanin vancomycin etc which are used as drugs of last resort when no other antibiotic is going to be effective these glycopeptides are actually administered to patients and these also go and affect the cell wall biosynthesis these also go and affect the cell wall biosynthesis and you have all heard about ciprofloxacin norfloxacin suna hai mallika ciplox yes, so yes, all of us have yes, used this particular yes, antibiotic yes, ciplox yes, sir, so this is an antibiotic that actually goes and attacks dna gyrase dna gyrase is involved in dna replication so when the uh, bacterial cell is going to replicate it is going to divide when the dna has to be replicated this is going to be inhibiting that and you have quinolones which are going to be affecting the topoisomerase part uh, and the gyrase part so you have the dna gyrase that is going to be affected and you have got a lot of these uh, antibiotics which are going to be 
used against UTI infections. It is also going to be used against uh, gastrointestinal infections. And this is a very important class of antibiotics. Another antibiotic that is going to be now affecting RNA synthesis is going to be rifamycin. And this is one of the major drugs involved in control of uh, what is it called, the TB. So you have the, uh, what is it called, rifamycin, which is going to be an anti-TB drug, which is one of the most important drugs against control of TB. And it is going to be effective against various gram-positive bacteria and many gram-negative bacteria also, okay? So you have glendamycin, rifamycin, rifampicin, rifampin, all these are going to be in this class of antibiotics, okay? And you are also having another target wherein some antibiotics, which are going to be new classes of antibiotics, which are going to be going and affecting the cell membrane, not the cell wall, but they are going to be affecting the cell membrane. So they are going to be uh, bonded to a lipid so that they are going to be going and binding to the cell membrane and cell membrane is going to get compromised. And because of that, they are going to, the bacterial, bacteria is going to be killed. So having given a brief idea as to antibiotic, why these antibiotics are there, and these antibiotics are actually going to be affecting different targets, not that the, all these antibiotics are going to be affecting only one particular target. We are now coming to the main part of our discussion as to, uh, because of this increased use of these antibiotics also, uh, I want to end the show and uh, I want to talk to you. So the problem is that most of these antibiotics now that have we have discussed have been isolated from natural compounds or natural entities. So most of these antibiotics like penicillin, it was secreted by this mold penicillium glaucum and uh, we have purified it. And there are many such penicillin molecules, penicillin derived molecules uh, or not penicillin derived molecules, sorry. Uh, Actinomycin derived molecules that are there, right from strep uh, penicillin, streptomycin, rifampicin, all these are produced from, uh, what is it called? Natural actinomycetes that are going to be there. And because these are going to be present by the uh, producers by themselves, so this antibiotic producer organisms themselves will be having to protect themselves from these antibiotics. So in nature, you have this antibiotic uh, protection mechanism already present in many of these bacteria. But it was limited only to some of these bacteria, which were, were those that were producing these antibiotics, because the antibiotics are produced by these microorganisms to have some advantageous effects when compared to the other organisms in nature. So now we have utilized this particular product for our benefit, and we have forgotten that in nature, there exists multiple mechanisms that can combat these antibiotics. So what nature has done is it has mobilized these antibiotic fighting mechanisms, which we call, uh, which we call here as uh, antimicrobial mechanisms, which we call here as antimicrobial mechanisms. Okay. And this is contributing to the resistance development against antibiotics in bacteria. You're getting my point, Malika and Sharda and Shivani? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. You have multiple such natural mechanisms that are going to be present, and these are going to be mobilized by uh, these bacteria, like efflux pumps. So you have this efflux pumps that is going to be secreting out all the, what is it called, xenobiotics that are going to be coming within the cell of the bacteria. So they are going to be increasing in concentration and they are going to be increasing in efficiency so that whatever antibiotic is going to be coming within the cell is going to be pumped out very quickly because of which the residence time of the antibiotic within the cell is going to be much reduced. The second is that when we are targeting cell wall, when we are targeting the cell wall, uh, like fluoroquinolones or um, I mean, targeting the cell wall, the DNA gyrase, the ribosomes, many of these. So uh, these targets are going to be modified in such a way that the target's primary function is not going to be affected, but the drug binding site is going to be modified because of which the 
drug will not be able to bind to the target but the target's primary function is going to be continuing uh, properly and the third way by which this is going to be affecting is that you are going to be having inactivating enzymes like i said beta lactam antibiotics you are going to be having a beta lactam ring and these and uh, these uh, what is it called bacteria have used many of these enzymes that they have to actually inactivate these beta lactams so you have enzymes that are going to be uh, degraded they are going to be inactivated so they are going to be rendered ineffective so there are various ways by which these antibiotics are going to be fought by these bacteria and you have got these antibiotic resistance mechanisms so as we had said in uh, our uh, what is it called in the initial uh, what is it called initial part of our lecture that you have these antibiotics that are uh, used and which has really helped us to lead a longer life to lead a more healthy life to lead a more uh, so called fruitful life mm, that fruitful will be a very what is it called subjective uh, term a longer life definitely so this is now getting what is it called compromised this is now getting compromised we are finding that developing new antibiotics is going to be a very very costly process because it involves a huge amount of money billions of dollars and not many companies have this much of what is it called uh, uh, capital to be investing and even though they might be bringing in new products these products these new chemical products also develop resistance very quickly so that the amount of money that has got invested is not Uh, able to get recoup it is not able to be what is it called it is it is not giving a good business what is it called uh, perspective so not many companies are able to find new antibiotics new antibiotic molecules new antibiotic classes and uh, it is not that on a daily basis we are able to go and uh, go to nature and ask for new antibiotics so when you are going to be having antibiotics it has to go through a lot of what is it called um, safety protocols you have to have low mammalian toxicity for these antibiotics you should have low environmental toxicity for these antibiotics there are so many what is it called parameters that have to be met which are becoming stringent and more stringent and more more stringent so we have to be safeguarding this antibiotic resource that we are presently having from the bacteria developing resistance and they be rendered ineffective theek hai uh sharada yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. so you are hearing this particular uh, what is it called uh, development of the resistance in these antibiotics in a regular manner and you have this colistin which is a last resort antibiotic you have this colistin which is a last resort antibiotic which is going to be kahan gaya tha sinersid you have colistin you have many of these antibiotics which are going to be last resort and these last resort antibiotics are also be becoming ineffective because e coli is developing resistance to colistin so this colistin is going to be given to patients who are not responding to any of these antibiotics and this colistin is going to be provided to those patients and we are seeing we are seeing that these also are not being affected any of us has uh, what is it called encountered antibiotics personally or have heard of people not having uh, not getting cured because of antibiotic resistance kuch to sune hoge pehle uh students students are a faculty well, no sir yes sir we have heard of these uh, especially in malaria resistance we have heard malaria resistance you have heard okay even in antibiotics you have lot of hospital situations if you go you have a lot of antibiotic resistance that is going to be uh, and antibiotic uh, deaths because of antibiotic resistance is almost somewhere around uh, 1 million all over the world and in india especially in children it is somewhere around 70 to 80000 deaths happen all over india annually and this is going to be an understatement because uh, the, um, the deaths wherein it is going to be classified because of antibiotic resistance is going to be not reported properly so 
it might be because of this particular uh, what is it called infectious disease people will report that it is because of that but not because of antibiotic resistance but because of antibiotic resistance that has been reported in india itself is somewhere around 70 to 80000 uh, deaths so the number of these deaths because of antibiotic resistance is slowly increasing the number of these deaths because of antibiotic resistance is slowly increasing and it is very important that we understand the various facets of this particular problem okay now uh, i was having one particular slide here which i did not go into the detail mm. when antibiotics are going to be used in human medicine as well as in veterinary medicine there is this particular term that i have used here called animal husbandry what do you mean animal husbandry somebody can talk about this कुछ बोल सकते हो एनिमल हस्बेंड्री के बारे में क्या होता है हैव यू हर्ड दिस टर्म एनिमल हस्बेंड्री अर्लियर यस सर सो व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय दैट यू हैव हर्ड क्या होता है एनिमल हस्बेंड्री वेयर इन वी आर गोइंग टू केयरिंग एंड ब्रीडिंग द फार्म एनिमल्स केयरिंग एंड ब्रीडिंग फॉर फार्म एनिमल्स and because they are going to be producing a lot of uh, what is it called products that are going to be useful for humans they are going to be uh, produced in larger numbers okay so what are the normal farm animals that we are uh, familiar with batana jara cow the cow, cow buffalo and uh, chicken chicken and cow very good chicken is quite familiar very good sheep goat sheep goat okay we have mutton how many of us are non vegetarians who use uh, what is it called meat products there is nothing wrong in being a non vegetarian kitne log hain nobody oh my god and you are good so what do you like chicken or mutton the so chicken mutton fish chicken mutton fish anything good so i have a friend a colleague in my department who says that mereko doctor ne mana kiya hai vegetarian khane ke liye mereko har din non vegetarian khane ke liye bola hai karke bolta hai so he eats everything i said uh, we should be very careful with him to so, kabhi kabhi hame bhi kha lega karke so the problem is you know about uh, when the antibiotics were identified in 1940s 1950s there was another thing where ye kabhi dekha hai ki chicken is one of the major sources of antibiotic resistance kabhi padha hai shivani and others yeah, yes sir yes sir yes, sir. chicken egg and uh, not egg ya yeah, chicken egg also and some egg milk milk are also you have antibiotic residues that are going to be there yes sir you will be having antibiotic and residues. recently in honey i think they reported in honey also they have reported antibiotic residues wonderful what i am talking of here is that it is not only antibiotic residues that are becoming a problem antibiotic resistant bacteria in chicken which is becoming a very serious problem you are able to understand the difference antibiotic residue is a major problem but antibiotic resistant bacteria in these chicken are bigger problems because many of these bacteria that are going to be present in chicken in mutton in uh, farm products are going to be directly coming in contact with human subjects and the disease is going to get transmitted the resistance mechanism is going to get transmitted theek hai and the now, amount of uh, poultry product that is being produced in india is somewhere around 4 million tons of uh, what is it called uh, chicken that we are producing chicken meat that we are producing and we are almost producing a billion eggs uh, per year and uh, we, india is the fourth largest producer of chicken eggs as well as uh, she is the uh, mere khayal se third or fourth in position as far as chicken meat is being produced the first is china then it is united states then it is going to be india so india does produce uh, but when you when you compare with other countries a large portion of uh, indians consider themselves as non vegetarians and uh, malika okay so a uh, large portion of indians consider themselves to be non vegetarians they don't um, i mean consider themselves to be vegetarians they don't you feed on 
uh, what is it called animal meat but even then the number of people because with increased economic improved economic situation of individuals people start preferring uh, animal protein and uh, chicken is probably the most um, uh, easily available and cheaper animal protein that many of us indians can afford to also so uh, we go now to the next step of 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 this particular lecture so we will stop here yeah we can stop